Hey guys, um, well here's the next tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm gonna do the DirectX manager stuff. That'll that'll initialize everything that DirectX, you know. Um, I decided not to do the timer thing because it's pretty simple to do. If you don't know how to do a timer class or whatever, then just look it up. If you really need me to do one, then just let me know if anybody's seeing this video. And you really want to know how to do one, then just let me know. But anyways, let's head on to the DirectX Manager stuff. I create a new class, and just call it. Uh, I'm gonna call it DX Manager. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm gonna call it DX. So include a file name. A D3 DX9 the H file that will have all our, all of our stuff that we will need. Um, we, we will need a direct X object, so you get the LP direct 3D9. It is just basically a direct X object that we will need. And after that, we will need a device. You will get the DirectX device, so it's LP Direct 3D Device 9, and it's that's what we will use for our device. Well, it's not object; it's device. And then after. For after that, we'll get a uh, a sprite which will get our uh, which we will need in order to draw our stuff to the screen. It's basically the interface of the, of the DirectX and it's LP DirectX LP Direct Three X actually sprite M sprite. Um, let's see, I didn't spell anything. LPD, LPD3D, that's why I misspelled it. LP, it's, it's not LP Direct X Price, LPD3. X Sprite. You gotta get this stuff right. Alright. And after that, I'm gonna create. A, well, you don't really have to do this, but I'm gonna create a struct that contains the texture data, which will get the direct X texture stuff. Uh, so it's the LP direct. Let me see it's LP direct real quick. Yeah, three D texture nine. And you just call it M texture or use texture, I guess. You'll get a sharp pointer of file name, so whatever name of that texture will be, or the picture or whatever you called it, yeah, you want to draw on the screen, and you get a boolean that saying that if it's in use or not. And don't forget the semicolon. Oh yeah, you could do it this way, or you freak, you know. A different way to do this then go ahead. And then just call that texture data. And it an array of that, which will have max textures. We haven't declared it, but we're declaring it right now. So I'll just include a define. That will have a max textures. Let's just say 250 for now. I think that's much as we can use. And then he's called a, a, a function. 
called Clean Up Your Rack X. Clean Up Your Rack. Which will clean up our stuff, our direct X if you're not using it. It's like deleting them. Like um, for pointers, after you end the program, you have to delete them. So, it's same process. Okay, now we can go to public. And we will create a bool initialize function. Initialize direct X. Which will pass in an HWND. Wait, HWND. Create another boolean that will create our sprite. Get an H result that will return our H result of bang in scene. I'll talk about what this function will do in it when I'm actually doing it, working on it, and that function. A start scene, create a void start scene. And, oh yes. And a void end scene. Now we'll um, create our draw render stuff. Um, either if it's going to be static or if it's going to be moving, wait, oh, no, wait, no, maybe let me say that again. We're going to create two different sprite functions. One will, will take in a texture, a draw rect, and a position. The other one will, will contain uh, its texture and just a position. So let's say we want to create a static. That will not be moving. Then just use that, and the other one, which we just create a texture. Uh, so let's do that real quick. Void. It's gonna return void, of course. Draw a sprite. And uh, real quick. I don't want to do that whole thing again. LP direct X texture. A rec for that sprite or texture and D3 DX vector 3 position. Let me see if I called that right before I can continue. Yeah. Then we can do another sprite which will contain a texture. And just a position. And for the last function, you can create draw sprite texture d3dx vector three. Oh wait, no mind, no mind. Forget about that. Point that. It's just we'll create just a texture. And we will have getters in here. Just in case we'll need it, so we get an LP direct X texture of get texture, which will pass in a sharp pointer or a file name. I will talk about what each of these functions will do when I'm actually working on it, so don't worry about it. And for the next one, it will create a an LP device that will return a. Let me just go get it real quick. I don't want to copy the whole thing. Then we'll return the device. Get device. And it will just return the MD3D device. And the main reason why I didn't do it for the other one right here is because that one will contain a little bit more information. And putting everything here will probably look kind of messy, I guess. So I, I'm going uh, to put it in a CPP file. And outside, I'm going to create something called extern. That 
I don't know if any of you guys know what extern is. I still don't know don't know the exact grasp of it. But it is um let's say um it's basically uh it, an object that will be shared. It'll be a global variable you could say. That will be used in across different files. Multiple files. You could probably call it like a super global variable, I guess. And it's not being declared yet, but it will be declared in a different file. So that's what extern is supposed to be. I don't really know the exact grasp of it yet, so but you can look it up and go Google it, and you'll figure out what that is. Let's compile it real quick and see if it compiles. And yeah, it compiles. I'm gonna go into the CVP file in a different video because I'm gonna like in 10 minutes already. We're about to be 11 right now, so. We'll do the rest in the next tutorial, alright? See you guys there.